Welcome back to another video on my channel and this video is about dynamic range of the new 60 megapixel sensor in the brand new Leica M11. And what you see here in front of you is the camera mounted on a small table tripod and here in the background I have a solar power charger and that is charging the battery as you can see here on that little symbol here so I don't have to worry about running out of battery in the course of the video and now let's get started. The new Leica M11 is fully packed with new features and don't miss my introductory video where I looked into all new features of the Leica M11 and also don't miss my video where I looked into mechanical versus electronic shutter which is one of the new features in the Leica M11 and the USB charging support which you can use on the go with a mobile charger or a battery pack so you never run out of power. The Leica M11 has a brand new CMOS sensor incorporated and you can actually shoot this camera with three different resolutions and this menu entry is the first time we see this on a rangefinder camera. So if I choose it, we can use the native resolution of the sensor which is 60 megapixel but we can also shoot RAW in 36 and in 18 megapixel. In my unboxing video and where I presented all new features of the Leica M11, I was asking the question what can we expect with a 60 megapixel sensor when it comes to dynamic range and to noise? And the experiment I want to do and present in this video is we will choose a shooting location in Zurich at daylight. We'll take all of the three different resolutions. Shoot images will underexpose the image, overexpose the image, see how we can correct them in post. We'll also look into the resolution differences and we'll also shoot at insanely high ISO values and see whether there is any difference in noise behavior if we go for these three different resolutions. So let's grab the camera, let's go outside, let's do the shooting. I've mounted on the camera the Aposumicron M 35mm f2.0 aspheric lens. It's one of my favorite lenses and I think is the best choice for the little experiment we are going to do. I had a lot of fun testing the camera and pushing the envelope and I want to start with a few images and again show sharpness and also coming from the Aposumicron 35 here the beautiful soft smooth bokeh you have in the background so someone here was leaving and forgetting her or his head on a fountain and if you look into that this is an ISO 640 is so sharp so clear but at the same time such a nice shallow depth of field. So I really like the image quality coming from the Leica M11. Here is another image and uh, if you look at that this is so sharp, so crisp. You see all the structure in the wood here. Very nice and at the same time you have quite some soft background blurriness here. Here is another image and then I stop praising the sharpness of the sensor in combination with the 35mm Aposumicron and we really turn our attention to dynamic range. But here I was focusing on the eye at the fountain in Zurich and you see so much detail here. It's just amazing. And I think a lot of people when I had my first thoughts on the Leica M11 and speculated in fall last year or when it was that this will have a 60 megapixel sensor, a lot of people said that is a no-go without in-body image stabilization. But I can tell you I did these photos all handhold shooting and there is no problem at all. It works like a charm and the image quality the sharpness, the clarity you get from these images is just mind-blowing. Let's now have a look into a few sample images where I intentionally underexposed the image. And I really pushed the envelope here. So the image on the left-hand side is 1 over 250 seconds and is three full stops underexposed for the foreground scene here. 
And then in post, I corrected for three full stops with the exposure slider in Lightroom. And you see here coming from these dark areas on the left hand side, I was able to recover all the information out of the shadows, which actually was there. And that's a sign of a very strong dynamic range. And there are other indications we'll have a look into in the course of the video, but that is a first observation. And uh, there is a technique in photography, which is called ETTL, called exposure to the left, where people intentionally underexpose to not have an exposure in highlighted areas of the image, where highlights get clipped and you lose information in overly bright parts of the scene. In general, my recommendation is always to try to expose an image correctly, because if you overdo ETTL or exposure to the left, it will come at the expense of some noise. And let's quickly zoom in in the image to show that. So I was focusing here in the background at this palm tree and you see the palm tree is nice and sharp, but there is some grain. It's very soft grain. It's not really crushing the image here, but you see some noise. And if you overdo ETTL, you typically have a more noisy image after post-processing. That's why I also recommend if you want to underexpose to preserve more information in highlights, when in a scene contrast between highlights and dark areas is very strong, then it is better to not push the envelope by three full stops, but maybe 1.5 stops or two stops maximum, but not three stops as I did here. Clearly this was for illustrative purposes. I wanted to show that everything here becomes visible, what you can't see in the underexposed image on the left-hand side. Here's another very extreme example. So the left-hand side is underexposed by four to five full stops. And in post-processing, I recovered the image and you see how nicely this works, which again indicates a very strong dynamic range on the new Leica M11 sensor. And if I zoom in for a moment, you get a bit of softness here and you get a little bit of grain and noise. Again, I was shooting this at f5.6 and focusing at the background here, but uh, in general, it's nevertheless a masterpiece what that sensor is delivering here. If you think about five full stops correction in post-processing. Here's a less extreme example. This is a correction by one full stop and that's more the way you should actually use the technique I mentioned before, ETTL, exposure to the left. Don't go for an extreme like three full stops or more. Use it for one, 1.5, maximum two stops in order to preserve some highlights in the background if you want to do so. And here with one stop, you see if I crop into 100%, now the image is really clean, super sharp. Look at Weltliner Keller here on the sign, quite nice. And this is a more reasonable approach if you want to underexpose your image don't go for the extreme, use it in a moderate way. Here's a last sample image on that particular topic, namely pulling information out of shadows, which I wanted to show here. And uh, this is an image on the left-hand side, which is underexposed by three to four stops. I corrected for full four stops on the right-hand side. And if I crop in here, this is a really nice image. If you see that this is so clear and so well done, you can even read all the signs here on the house walls and you know the traffic signs. It looks really good. I'm quite happy with that result. So you can, if you need in an extreme situation, easily correct three to four stops under exposure on that new Leica M11 sensor. Now that image was shot with the lowest ISO available on the M11, namely ISO 64. What I did then next is pulling up the ISO from 64 to 6,400 and let's see what we get then. Same shooting location now, but an ISO of 6,400 instead of an ISO of 64. The shutter speed is the same, one divided by 250 seconds and aperture is f5.6, which typically on street is my aperture to go to for Leica M lenses. And what you see here, all these wishy-washy blown out highlights on the background, they are all nicely recovered here at the house walls. You see the traffic signs again, you don't see any noise in that image besides the fact that an ISO of 6,400 is already quite high and the scene looks really good. And the correction here was two full stops. So on the left hand side, I intentionally overexposed by two full stops. And on the right hand side, I recovered that in post and uh, use the exposure slider for two full stops of correction to the left hand side. Now here I kept the ISO of 6400, but I changed the shutter speed from one divided by 250 seconds to one over 60 seconds. So I significantly more overexposed the image. 
And you see this on the left hand side, there is hardly anything recognizable. Whereas on the right hand side, I try to recover as best as possible in Lightroom by correcting to the left on the exposure slider for four full stops. Nevertheless, I lose a lot of information here. And if I crop into the image, you see in let's say parts of the image, it's still pretty good. But if I go to the extreme highlights here, towards the sky, you see, for instance, here information is cut off and that's coming from highlight clipping and information is just no longer possible to be recovered out of these super strong overblown highlighted areas. You also see that a lot of information on the color side here is lost. So this image is not usable on the right hand side. Also, I managed to get information back, which was lost on the left hand side by some post-processing with the exposure slider. So I would say four stops is too much. Two stops was easy to recover as we saw before. Four stops out of highlights introduces highlight clipping, information, coloring, a lot of stuff gets lost, which you actually would like to get back in post-processing. And if you remember when we talked about exposure to the left and I said, if you overdo it, it comes at the expense of noise in very dark areas where you recover just by post-processing. Here on the other direction, if we have exposure to the right and we overdo it, then we lose information simply by highlight clipping and that's not what we want. If there is too much contrast between highlights and shadows in a scene, I still think that if it is a still scene, the best weapon against that is actually an HDR image. And by exposure bracketing here, we have five different frames coming from underexposure to overexposure and then getting them compiled together in Lightroom. I created this scene here and that looks really good. It's a very clean, noise-free image. You see here all the structure, all the details, people at, you know, the lake, you see the buildings in the background. You have here in the foreground that little island here and you have the Swiss mountains in the background in the nice evening light. So that is, in my opinion, always the best recipe. If you have a still scene and you have in some areas too much brightness, in other areas of the scene too much shadows, then combine it via an HDR process and do it via exposure bracketing. The shooting location I just showed will now stay with us for the next give or take five minutes because now I want to look into do I see an effect if I go for different resolutions as shown in an earlier part of the video on the Leica M11 menu. And you also saw in that clip very likely that the former Visoflex was mounted on the Leica M11 and that was the first day early December when I took out the camera to shoot it. And uh, when I mounted the Visoflex I realized quickly that it stays black and uh, I had the case of the Visoflex not with me, so I just left it in the hot shoe. So don't take this as an indication that by now the former Visoflex works on the Leica M11. It's not. This time let's start by looking into highlights. And what I'm going to show you is the following. You see here now always with three images on the left hand side, an image which has been intentionally overexposed by about two full stops. And don't get misled, by the way, by the aperture. I did shoot all images at an aperture of f8. The aperture is not correctly transported from the lens into the metadata of the camera. And uh, I have taken the same scene with that overexposure with 63 megapixel, with 36.5 megapixel, and with 18.4 megapixel. And then I corrected respectively on the right hand side in Lightroom by correcting via the exposure slider by two full stops to the left hand side. I also applied some perspective correction which explains these boundaries here which you might have spotted in the clip before. What you see here now on the left hand side is the corrected formerly by two full stops overexposed image with 60.3 megapixel and on the right hand side you have that same scene also corrected in post for two full stops of overexposure, but with 36.5 megapixel. And if I look into these images, I tried hard, but I don't see any significant difference. I think they are both easy corrected and two full stops is absolutely no challenge for the camera. And even if I go into the brighter areas here, 
I don't think there is any meaningful difference visible or recognizable here besides the fact that the right hand side has significantly less resolution but the left hand side with the full resolution of 60.3 megapixel is absolutely fine. So in order to keep the video to a reasonable length I cannot match and compare all different possible combinations of Percy and Lightroom. So let's look into something different and let's see if then we discover some difference between the different resolution. Let's also go more extreme. So what you see here on the left hand side is an image with the full resolution 60.3 megapixel f8 and an ISO of 32,000. So very, very high. And then of course to compensate for that overly high ISO number with a shutter speed of one divided by 16,000. And you see the same scene with the same shooting parameters on the right hand side, but now with 18.4 megapixel. And if I look into that image now, again, I tried and I was staring at these images for quite a while. I don't see significant differences. And clearly if I get them locked here in Lightroom, I have never the same size. So let's see if on the right hand side now, I can crop in even further to 200%. But if you compare these images, they both look good. Based on what, like I said about pixel binning to achieve the lower resolutions on the raw file, as we saw in the menu of the Leica M11, my assumption would be that this has a significant impact on noise behavior if you shoot at an ISO as insanely high as I did here with 32,000, but I don't really see it. So here's a different part of that image and I cropped in now much more than 100%, so give or take 300%, but then even if you would see some better noise behavior on the right hand side where you have only 18.4 megapixel in contrast to the left hand side where you have 60.3 megapixel based on the lower resolution if you crop in deeply the picture becomes grainy anyway because of a lack of resolution and uh, so I think if we want to have a hypothesis that with pixel binning on the Leica M11 and shooting at lower resolutions you get generally a better noise behavior I don't think I can confirm this hypothesis here with these particular images. So what about recovery out of shadows? And it's kind of the same story. I'll quickly walk through, but there is no new insight I gained from that exercise. So we have here now three images and they are underexposed by a bit more than two full stops on the left hand side and then corrected in post. We are the exposure slider and Lightroom on the right hand side. And we have here 60.3 megapixel. We have here 36.5 megapixel and we have here 18.4 megapixel. And uh, if I look into these images in detail, I compared them in the same way as I did it when I recovered out of highlights. No significant difference between these images, not at all. And uh, I don't see any effect of what Leica calls or seems to have implemented in terms of pixel binning. And uh, I'll come to conclusions in a moment. I really tested this up and down and showing you all the images and all the test procedures I did doesn't really help and makes the video unnecessarily long. The conclusion is there is good and bad news. The bad news is whatever Leica implemented in terms of pixel binning is not at least in my humble assessment showing any effect in lower resolution RAW files. I just didn't find it. I tried hard but I didn't find it. The good news is at the high resolution, more than 60 megapixel, the Leica M11 is so excellent in dynamic range and so great in noise behavior that you actually can use lower resolutions if you want to have smaller file size or if you don't need the resolution but you don't have to. If you want to go for the full resolution, you can safely do so because dynamic range and noise behavior of that new Leica M11 sensor is just absolutely perfect. Clearly I will give it another last try and is there anything in terms of improvements coming from what Leica calls pixel binning and that will be my last attempt for the time being then I will not look into that topic again before I see that Leica has mentioned in a firmware update they actually improved their pixel binning. What I also want to look into and that's more an outlook I will compare the Leica M11 with the Leica M10 monochrome that's a video in the pipeline for the next week. That will be super interesting because the Leica M10 monochrome is still the standard when it comes to dynamic range and noise behavior among Leica M sensors. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned, there is always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.